where you're going. All right, so welcome back to Marty's Marketing Mondays. And today we're gonna to be talking about focusing with your marketing so that you, it's easier, it's more um, zoned in and laser focused. Um, I've heard uh, Laura West say, you know, scattered focus, scattered results, uh, laser focus, laser results. So uh, we're gonna talk about some ways to baby step into the marketing, how to make it easier, how to make it um, simpler on you, and also how to actually get better results from that. Because a lot of times we try to teach people too much at one time and uh, try to do too many things. And I think this is probably indicative of why it's not, well. No, I don't think they're about the wig. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna mute her. Okay, so the, <laughs> um, what I was gonna say is the fact that like newsletters, remember how we used to do newsletters and you'd have a whole bunch of articles inside of a online newsletter and you'd send that out maybe once a week, once a month, whatever. And those used to be, they used to work and now they don't work as well. You don't get as good of results from those because you're telling people too many things at one time. There's too many places. They look at all this information. They can't digest it. And so they don't do anything. They just think, Oh, this, I really like her and I want to follow her, but I don't have time to do this right now. So they store it away in a folder and then they never come back to that, you know? So everybody has limited amount of, attention span and so just short bursts of marketing work the best so you want to have a, a strategy an overall strategy for what you're trying to do and that uh, let's say that you're you've got okay donna for example you've got your mind shift on demand book that's coming out you've got your courses that you're going to create on the back end from that probably got some um, individual coaching on the back side of that you know i'm sure you have your funnel thought out on that Okay, so with your marketing, instead of trying to give a whole bunch of information, you could do little short, if you wanna use video, you could do little three minute video bursts that are just on something zoned in. You wanna just convey one point, for example. Let's say that um, you just wanna teach the concept of how, um, how important it is to be able to shift your mind on a dime, okay? just really fast and you could talk about how in poker you know you got you just threw you got a bad hand you just lost that and how the energy from that gets carried into the next hand that you're doing if you're not careful and you need to be able to shift your energy you can't go up and meditate before the next hand plays out right <laughs> you can't use some big elaborate you know visualization that's really big and long and you need something really quick to just turn it on a dime. So you could just talk about that one concept of why it would be important to turn your mind, shift your mind, shift, shift your mind on a dime. And then um, you might give some examples of real life examples of when that's important. And it wouldn't be necessarily that you're going to go into depth on each one of them, but you could say in this circumstance, this circumstance, this circumstance, you might need this. Um, and it could, you know, it could span different situations. So the idea behind this is to create a piece of marketing material that focuses on one thing. And it might be that if you find that, hey, the application of, of teaching them why it would be important to shift your mind fast might be a series of little videos that are like, two to three, one to three minute, three minute videos where you just talk about that one application. You don't even have to teach them how to do it in it because they, you know, get the book, right? The book's going to show you how to do it. So you could even share examples of a situation where somebody needed to shift their uh, thinking and then what the outcome was when they did, or maybe a, an, a bad example of where somebody didn't shift it and then they made, you know, kind of a, a dumb mistake after that because they're still stuck in the energy of the bad thinking from before. So um, the idea behind it is just to create these very hyper-focused uh, pieces of content around one main point, okay? Now, if you were gonna do, um, let's say you were gonna send an email out 
and you've got four bullet points around um, times when people need to shift their thinking, all right? Maybe you've got four case studies, one a health one, one a sports one, one a game, you know, poker one, and one for just relationships or something when you're in a relationship that's, you know, you have a, a conflict or something. Okay, so you might have it where you've got these four bullet points inside of the email. If you, if you want to do it this way, you don't have to do that, but you say, need help shifting it when it's related to your health situation. You want to see an example of that. That could go over to a blog about that. The next one might go over to a blog about, you know, in the sporting situation. Another one would be a poker example. Another one would be, um, and each one of these would be like a blog post, okay? So that way, if you've got a mixed bag of people reading your content, and one of them's got a health concern, but they don't really care about poker, or they're a poker person, and they happen to have maybe a relationship issue, they might read a couple of them, because it's, it's really zoned in, really targeted. It's the same subject of how to shift, or why shifting fast is important, and it's maybe some before and afters. And then, of course, on the blogs, it would have how to get the book. So um, the, the cool thing about creating this just little micro content like this is that it baby steps you in to doing something. So you just kind of brainstorm. We talked about um, pre-educating people. What do they need to know before you, they buy from you? So I think that's an example of pre-educating. Why would they want to buy that book? Why do they need to know how to shift their thinking on a dime? So that's a pre-education. There may be another question that comes up, like what is a mind shift exercise? Maybe might be a question that they have. And you could do a little video that explained that. Or um, uh, unmute yourself, Donna, and tell me what are some, um, what are, are some things that you've gotten, questions from people. When you tell them about your book, what do they ask you and how can we turn that into some marketing pieces for you? I mean, we can brainstorm on that for you. Excellent. Perfect timing, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what do people say? Yeah, when you tell them about the book, do they ask you any questions or, or they make comments? Interestingly enough, I've been leading out with, a, a real quick story about the stroke. Uh, it seems to be, you know, it's, it's like, what's it about, you know, shifting your mindset, you know, our body is the vehicle, our mind is the driver and what we think we create and we have the ability to actually affect the healing of our body based on how we think. And people, there's people that have stress that come to me and they'll say, they'll read the back of it about the fact that uh, um, imagine the, uh, the power of the brain. We have this, this biological supercomputer and people will go, boy, I really need that because I'm really stressed or I've been really upset with, with my, I've been really cranky. You know, uh, I guess it's a crankiness. It's a stress. Uh, something else that people talk about is their self-confidence it's like I've, I've that is if there's anything bigger than anything else it's that people have have been successful or they've been okay in what they're doing but they've lost their self-confidence and and they need to reframe how they're thinking about themselves to be able to find their self-confidence so what what are people asking me about um how to communicate, you know, how to, uh, how to stop losing so much. Um, the, the issue of holding on to, to things too long, that concept of, of fold often, <laughs> fold early and fold often, <laughs> give yourself permission to fold. Uh, you know, and I, I think that I had stripped everything out, virtually everything out about, poker in the book but I think it's just fine to use it in a video as an illustration 
mm-hmm. uh, because uh, interestingly enough, the poker concept is a much bigger hook than I thought it was going to be, even in a spiritual community, uh, because I was at um, Women Poker Network's unconference two weeks ago uh, for a three-day conference, and I was really surprised because I, I thought the poker part of it was going to put be off-putting to people, and it wasn't. They thought it was cute, interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that. So the po- poker part of it, use it as a hook, was okay, as long as it wasn't just about um, as long as it just wasn't about the game of poker, even people that didn't know how to play poker wanted to know the concept of it. So I don't think I really answered your question. Well, I'm you kind of going around. And... You actually did. I was listening. Okay. <laughs> did did I tell me what I said? Because I feel like I'm going around in in circles. This is what I feel like I'm doing when I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, Marty, fix that, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hearing you say that the poker works as a metaphor for explaining to people why. So you can use it as the metaphor, okay? So that whole um, fold early, fold often would be a fantastic video. That would be a really good short video you could use. Um, So in relationship to to relationships or if you're in at work and, and, you know, you think you have so much invested in in what you're, oh, I guess chills, thank you. I heard that. You have so much, (laughs) yeah, okay, I'm I'm listening. You have so much invested in in what you're doing and, and, and you think that you have to continue doing it, but you're just putting, you're just putting good money after bad because you just got to let something go. Yeah, it works in relationships and and careers, um, um, even business paths. You know, sometimes there comes a point where that's just not working and you're going to have to shift and do something different, you know. So I think you could do, you could do almost a whole series on the fold early and fold often with different applications for it, really. But, um, and I actually see that as being another book. Give yourself, I see, give yourself permission to fold, but it can lead, it can can write the book by doing the videos, huh? Yeah, you could. Yeah. And I try to figure out some way to tie it into the book you're, releasing right now for sure if you do those but um the how to stop losing is could be a video um i think the application of the mind shift on demand with stress like giving an example of somebody who was stressed before and after using it uh, even if that example is you um the cranky you know um, <laughs> I, I keep thinking of like road rage, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, yes. do a road rage video, you know, how to use my chip on demand with uh, road rage. Um, <laughs> um, the self-confidence is the one you could use it with, how to shift, how to get from feeling down to self-confidence just with a, a shift, you know? Uh, oh, and, and if, if I can jump right in, I'm actually speaking, I'm doing a 15-minute presentation in front of a, a veteran's pain workshop tomorrow because I, on Halloween, which was my, my fourth birthday, by the way, I was four, oh, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the, the, the stroke was Halloween of 2013, so oh, oh. I was four, and <laughs> I happened to take my husband to a, a scheduled procedure that day at the VA. And uh, while he was having the procedure, I went over to his primary care and I had the book with me and I wanted to show it to one of the nurses. She loved it so much. She grabbed the book and grabbed my arm and said, come with me. And she took me down the hall to see the pain doctor. Oh. And, and his name is Kazi. And I said, wow. And I said, here, I said, and I, I handed him the book and I'm going here, you, you, you. You want the book? <laughs> and he said, this is wonderful. And he said, well, tell me about it. And I did a little, little cord up on it. And he said he does once a month, he does a, a 90 minute pain workshop for veterans who are on uh, opioids, pain medications. That's a huge problem yeah. in our country. And he said, will this help with pain? And I said, well, it actually does because I work with my husband in relationship to pain sometime I said it's it's something that you're not it's not that you can do it once and your pain's gonna be gone because you have to work through the steps but in a 15-minute presentation in front of veterans who are in chronic pain where do I focus that Marnie (laughs) 
can you can you get a chance to present to his people? That's gonna, what I'm doing. I mean, I'm presenting. I'm presenting. I am presenting oh, to. You are. I, I am presenting to about 20 people in this workshop, and Gregory has to come with me because anybody that presents has to be. So I, he did. So Greg's going with me, and I said to Greg, I said, "What would you say about this?" And I, she, he said, "I, I would say that mind shifting works and helps me with my pain if I do it. If I'm too stubborn and don't, it doesn't." And I said, would you say that before we start? Yeah, <laughs> and he, really? said, <laughs> he said, sure. But with so much to share, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do is to do, in essence, I really need to do a micro presentation. Uh -huh. And I'm right now I'm going, what is the, what's the best approach? Hmm. Um, can you bring somebody up and do it with them on the fly? I mean, or is that, could you feel comfortable, I mean, confident doing that? Like if some, you took a volunteer out of the 20 people in the room and took them through an exercise? I was going to take everyone through the exercise. Okay, okay, okay. If I were going to do it, I would say, I, okay, this is what it is. All right. I'm not sure in front of this, but I believe I need to have them. I'll teach them the signature mind shift exercise. Hmm, isn't that interesting? But I need for them to, to rate it before they need to come up with the, the rate where they are before give it a number mm -hmm. and then rate afterwards so that we have something that's quantitative. Uh, but I need something to lead in it. That, that takes about seven or eight minutes to do that, to teach, to walk them through it. But I need something to launch into that. Is it something as simple as just a quick story about the stroke? I mean, I, it, yeah. I it's think it's not your, start with your story because that would engage them into it. Or do I, do I, since Greg's there and I'm six, five and he's five, three, this is veterans. We want them to laugh. Yeah. You know, do I bring, did I bring my husband up and say, okay, we might as well get this over. I'm six, five. He's, he's five, three. When I met him, he, he thought I was a big bitch and I thought he was a little shit and we're both right. <laughs> I mean, do I, do I, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's veterans and, and you know, <laughs> I, you know, those are the two words that I have permission to say. <laughs> And Judy's laughing so hard, I guess maybe I need to start that, you know. <laughs> in front of veterans who are dealing with chronic pain and they're on opioids, I think it's okay to use those two words. <laughs> is, is that a good start, Judy? I'm looking at you laughing. <laughs> She's trying to not say anything. <laughs> no, I think given your audience that you've hooked them. Okay, then that's okay to say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, and then and then have Greg say something about the mind shifting, you know, and see where we go from there. And and I guess maybe do a little bit of of. I, I mean, you know, he was he and I were professional speakers when we first met. He's phenomenal in front of people, but he also is in chronic pain. But his pain, he takes less med he takes less pain medication because of the mind shifting. So yeah, I would let him give like a testimonial of it, and then. Um, I don't know where, how long it takes for you to tell your story in a nutshell, but, um, the stroke story. Yeah. I can, I can do that in 90 seconds without rushing. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. You know, I had a massive left brain stroke Halloween, 2013. I was airlifted to the teaching hospital, university of Florida. They kept saying I would never be able to speak for eight to nine months. And if usually garbled after that and I had this internal remote control I kept going cancel delete fast forward we're not gonna deal with that clear and using the mind shifting exercises that I had been using for 50 years I was able to speak in three days yeah perfect so that was about 45 seconds <laughs> yes Judy I just throw out a caution about saying that he it's using less meds yes. as a result of it in front of this group. You're right. You're right. You're right. So how would you say it instead? Rather than needing more medication, he's able to shift away from that. He's able to pivot his mindset, which helps him to pivot away from the pain. Rather than needing more. Is that better? It sounds fine to me. 
Yeah, that sounds good. I think that um, when people are in pain, especially the kind of excruciating pain that you're talking about, they want more and more and more and they think I've got to have a medication in order to ease the pain. So I like your word pivot because if you picture the person in your audience who is in the very worst pain at that moment, how are you going to give them something to say your first thought does not need to be take a pill. Your first thought should be, and then you map out these thoughts that do the mind shifting. Yeah, interestingly enough, we have seven seconds when a thought drops into our mind before it anchors and takes root, and we've got seven seconds to pivot. Literally seven seconds is all we have before it takes root. And we, can actually, we can actually pivot quickly when we have the toolkit. And it's interesting because standing here in front of you as people dealing with chronic pain, and my husband's been dealing with that since 2008, I'm very intimately aware of that. I've had pain myself that was chronic. I, I wasn't sure where to start because of the fact that if someone's in labor, it's really hard to teach them childbirth. I would so, not that example in front of the vets. Okay. I don't think it, I think to me, that's a disconnect when people start talking about birth pains, if they haven't birthed somebody. And I think most of these people are men, maybe they're not, but I, I would Thank just you. stay away from that myself. Thank you. If I'm talking to a bunch of mothers, that's one thing. Yeah. It, yes, you're absolutely right. Because I, it, it more than likely it will be men. There, there might be a woman or, or two, but interestingly enough, the women who are dealing with even PTSD and chronic pain aren't coming forward in the military because they're ashamed of it. Anyway. The, the seven second thing's really good. I would use that and, I, and, and go with the concept of when you're in the pain or the pain starting to come on or whatever it is, or getting worse, <laughs> I guess because they're living in it all the time, you have a window where you can make a choice and you could try something else and it could possibly work for you versus reaching for one more pill or, you know what I mean? Or alcohol or whatever it is that they're like reaching for. You're just giving them another option that may work over something else. You're giving them control where they're at feeling out of control. Correct. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the concept with mind shifting is that, is that you are, you have the opportunity to control your mindset rather than it controlling you. You know, you, you are now in control of your emotions rather than feeling like you're being pushed around like you're a wussy. Could you get a timer and let the timer do seven seconds and just have them sit during that seven seconds, throw out, um, isn't that interesting? And then have them sit on it for seven seconds or something like that, or even have them count out loud as a group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And everybody's on the, they have to focus on that if they're saying it and it's quiet, it's concentrated, there's an energy in the room because everybody's doing it. It's also a very good example of how short seven seconds is, how long seven seconds is, and how just what you're teaching them in that time period can, can make a difference. I mean, maybe ask them to think of something awful. <laughs> Well, that, that's, that, that's it, because in, in the, hmm, it's not interesting, I asked them, I said, I'm going to ask you in a moment to think of something really awful that gives you a problem, and when we finish the process, you're going to be away from that thought, but I need for you to bring it to mind, because I want you to rate where you are with that. Zero is, ah, it's nothing at all. Ten, it's terrible, it's awful, take me to the ER, just like you're rating pain. It's the same, the same number, so give it a number. And that's how we start is, is, you know, give me a number 
and you know how many tens do we have you know just just have people just raise their hand and you don't have to say what it is and so we get a number and I ask them to you know write that down you know where you are because you're going to see how you can actually shift away from that and that number drops down as we go through the process so but I like the concept of the timer I, I, I'm unsure that I'm going to use it tomorrow but I'm going to use that uh, that's a perfect thank you very much because I will use that with another one I, I like that sitting there for seven seconds and it might be a way to enter it in to it might be a good way to add it to there to that yeah so if you uh, if you just did kind of an introduction of what it's about use your story let Greg talk about his and then go into giving them the exercise you said you got 15 minutes right so and it'll take about it'll take about seven at the most to go through the isn't that interesting actually less than that but I don't want to push it I, I really want to take the time with it and I'm going to have um, a sheet I, I'll have a sheet of paper I'm going to actually print that out so I'll give them the, the the steps the seven steps to go through so they'll have that they can take that home at the bottom it'll say you know, the book a little bit about me at the bottom so I'm going to have a sheet of paper to give to them and I've got um, I've got these I'm going to give to them as well I made this is a eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper folded in quarters so that's the the book cover and then the back is it says the brain is the most powerful tool you own yet most people fail to understand it imagine the possibilities if you could harness the power of this magnificent biological supercomputer mind shift on demand will teach you to tap into this potential and be the best version of yourself confident authentic and in control and then a little bit about me and it mentions the poker and people kind of find that entertaining and then at the bottom there's an action plan which tells them Number one, go to Mind Shift on Demand. Number two, opt in for the free. Sorry. It's the VA. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty important. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, get that. Okay. So, um, now, Judy, you've got your book that you're going to be doing a relaunch of. Uh, is it the Monday after? Uh, the way it is now, it's... Saturday the 25th oh okay would be the first day and I may be on Kingdom Builders communion service that morning if even if they just put the Amazon link in the chat bar they use zoom and so it'll be free Saturday Sunday Monday and then Tuesday I'm on their spotlight and they send a letter out on Monday to the members of Kingdom Builders saying that I'm going to be on on Tuesday and here is the link to the book. So even if they don't come to the webinar on Tuesday, they have all that information in an email and then it'll go through to Wednesday. So I have that five day time frame um, where I can send to my own mailing list they'll send to their mailing li mailing list and then um, you know put it out on social media um, and I like Donna's idea of having the cover of the book on something to hand out like on the 17th of November I'm going to a, a Christian writers group and I was thinking maybe I could do what Donna did only on a smaller scale, put the cover of the book on there and say it'll be free on Kindle and list the five days. And in this group, I can say I'm trying to get to be a number one Amazon bestseller. So even if you never read the book, it's going to be based on how many people access it and free does count towards um, an access or a buy um, I mean I don't feel like that's too brazen to do in this particular group but then I'm thinking no. well, maybe I should get lots of them made and hand them out to people between now and then and say well you just go in and 
get the book, um, even if you don't read it, because I think most people don't read the Kindle books that they download. <laughs> they don't have time to do it, but if it's free and... Yeah, you might uh, price it and see, like on Vistaprint, you may be able to get them printed on little business cards with the cover on one side and about it on the back, but I wouldn't put the specific dates it's free. Okay. I would um, maybe put some lines there where you could write a note in of the dates that it's free when you hand it out. You need to go? Wait, just a minute, I think. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, th this, this handout has been awesome. I've been really surprised at how people like this. I had it done on cardstock. And it's become a bookmark. Yeah, there you and, go. I bet uh, you've got no dates or anything on that. You don't that is to, correct. It is, it is evergreen. It is and, evergreen. And I wouldn't say that it's free even on there either because it may be that you hand them out when you're selling it. You know, like, I mean, you're not I, doing free, but she is, I'm saying. Well, I, I'm telling them to opt in for a free four-minute mind shift exercise on my, on, my, on my site. Okay, okay. That works. And then, you know, it's, it, and it's go to mindshiftondemand.com. Number two, opt in for free four-minute mind shift exercise. Three, order book. <laughs> order book. I, yeah. didn't say, I didn't say go to Amazon because I wasn't sure, I, and I need to have an order, an order button. On the order button on the page, you on the page of, of your site, you put a you put an affiliate link, correct? Yeah. To the I would. book. I would, yeah. And and I am I have mislaid that information how to get an affiliate link. Oh, uh, when you go to Amazon, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, there's a link on the bottom that says like partners, I think is what it is. Let me pull that up. Um are you talking about a link to the, the, your book, your affiliate link? Let me show you real fast. Yes. You can't be an affiliate on your own book, I don't think, can yeah, you? Yeah, you can. You, can. you just can't use your own affiliate links inside of a book. But you can link to your book using your affiliate link. Um, at least you could the last I checked. Okay, so... Well, that's not it. Affiliate. Donna, you're going to laugh over there. You know, I'm in the library at the Cancer Center. Yes. I've never had anybody interrupt me before, but the guys who were just in here wanted to know if I could put my hands on a book called Stress Management that they had heard was in this library. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's hard to say, wait a minute. I've got somebody online who can tell you about that. Cool. Yeah, Cancer Center would be a good place for stress management. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I I absolutely feel strongly about the fact that the the healthcare industry is it needs to it's going to be the first launch because that's so huge. Yeah, and it fits with your story. So yeah, yeah. down at the very bottom, they've got become an affiliate, and when you go there, um, yeah, I, I am an affiliate, but I don't remember how to what I need to do. You log in up in the upper right. And then okay. you log in. It should be the same username and password that you use with. Oh, that's not going to be right though, because I've changed something. Hold on a second. Well, trying <laughs> <laughs> to show you. We cannot find an account with that. <laughs> Okay, I must have made a typo. All right, so uh, when you're in here, you just go to products links, product, okay. link, product links, and then you can search for it based on, you know, my a book, Mind Shift on Demand. Okay, so there you are. So, okay. You can either click on it. No, that goes to it. Hold on a second. I guess you just go to the get link, and that's the direct link. What I usually do is I'll okay. take create a pretty link over on my, like MindShift on, like if you get MindShiftOnDemand.com, and then just make slash 
book or something or whatever, you know, uh, and then I'd make a pretty link go to that. That's, that's what I usually do. Uh, the cool thing about pretty links is it will also tell me, tell you how many unique clicks you've had over. So you can see how well your marketing is working when you send people directly to Amazon. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Is that, it, it, it kind of, sort of, is, is the pretty links, is that a, is that a, a, a plugin? It's a plugin. So let me, let me just go here and show you. Yeah, it's a plugin called Pretty Link that you install. And then once it's installed into your system, then it'll create a new menu item over on the left. So let me show you. Once it's already been installed, you go here and then you could you can add a pretty link, which I should probably do for you because I know I'll promote your book. So let me just thank do you. That. So um, what I would do is uh, add a pretty link. Okay, so it's going to give me that. And I usually change it. If it's something I'm going to be doing a lot, I just make it a permanent one. Okay, so there's my affiliate link for you and this say mind shift. I'll just call it that. And makes a makes a sh S in mind shift capitalized, please. Okay. It's not going to show up anywhere but for me anyway. Okay. So this is just for my okay. reference so I know what's what. Okay. So oh, okay. so now it's here and see that link. Uh, we'll copy that. So if I were to go to that link now, it goes straight over to my Amazon affiliate link for your book. Cool. And the cool thing about the pretty link, let me go back over here. And that was a free plugin? It's a free plugin, yeah. Oh my God. yeah. Now, you have to be sure that the link is not, it, it, if, if you had, if you had a page that was said mind shift, that wouldn't work. So it has to be something that you don't have as a pay, as a page, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't make it the same. Um, and notice how it says, okay, there's been one click and one on unique. Um, so it's, it's keeps track. So it's nice because when I promote my client books, I can see that, okay, I sent this client 320 people over there. Um, some people wow. more than once, you know, so, um, that's kind of cool because then you can see how well people are clicking on through. You have at least a little bit of a counter there. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I did, uh, like the trust your heart series books. When I've sold those on Amazon, I sent people to my trust your heart series.com and they got the steps to do it. And then I used my Amazon affiliate link to the books. So I ended up, you know, for every 2000 I made in royalty for my part of selling the book, I made, I think I made like $200 extra in affiliate link. I mean, they paid me twice. They paid me for, <laughs> cause my book sales. And then I got paid for the affiliate link sales too. So, um, Definitely worth doing that. So like um, Judy for yours, if we were going to apply it to this focused marketing thing, I would come up with um, one aspect of your, um, your messaging to, to create some small content around. Now I, I saw something the other day that somebody did and I tried to tag you in it. And I don't know if you saw it cause you're probably not her friend and it may just be a private post. But I'm going to share this because this stood out to me. Okay, so this, this gal's name is Laurie Loader. She's one of my clients. Um, and she posted on Facebook this question. I've been thinking a lot about a person's value, the worth of a soul. What do you do to help others feel valued? It can be with a family member or someone you meet on the street. How do you convey the message you matter when crossing paths with others on this journey? Okay, so she had a good conversation going, and there's like multiple threads within these things. I think it was seemed like there was a lot more. 
Oh yeah, there's 10 more comments about that. Okay, and some of these go pretty deep. And I tagged you in here. Um, oh, thank you, wow. So I didn't know if you saw it. I, I tagged you, but you might, I don't know, if you're not her friend, you might not have noticed it. So, but that question evidently got some, um, you know, pick people's interest. So you could use some um, small posts like this. That's very targeted content around a question that gets people talking about your subject. Or you can make little videos on, you know, what does it mean to see your value? I mean, really. I mean, I don't think we, a lot of us really realize it. Um, for example, um, let me stop the share. Um, I never realized how much I self-deprecate until I started dating somebody who calls me on it every time I do. Now, wait a minute, let's back that up. You know, I'm getting out of the, the car, you know, from church, I got a skirt on and he makes a comment about my pretty legs. And I'll say, all I have to say is, well, they're really white. You know, I don't do them well. And he's like, let's back up a minute. Okay, let's do that again. Okay. Oh, I love him. Yay. <laughs> he talks about, says the comment about my legs and he goes, and he goes, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You know. yeah, so, so he's tagging you. That, the mind shift exercise tag. Yeah. Is, he's is yeah, he's yeah he does tag. that to So, I mean, in a way, we're, that's deval I'm devaluing myself. Yeah, every time I self-deprecate, I'm devaluing Until myself. recently. Until recently. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, two, the two words I learned oh, at the unconference, you say something like that and you're, you're saying it and you go, until recently. It's yeah. a good way to forgive yourself. So when you say that, you go, until recently. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. So, um, I mean, Judy, you could talk about a little video about, you know, what are the ways that we are devaluing ourselves? You know, what, what are some of the typical self-talk that we do? do? When somebody pays us a compliment, do we feel the need to, yeah, except for yada yada. I mean, I, I do that constantly. I come, you know, I, until, until recently, recently. <laughs> I, did that I did that constantly until recently. Until recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know, you might explore some of that because when you talk about valuing somebody, um, we were talking last night to a gal who was dating somebody that wasn't really, she was over committing, over investing, and the guy was like contacting her every once every three or four days and he really wasn't into anything going moving forward with anything. And we were talking to her about investing in things you know and not over investing in relationships where the other person really isn't valuing you i mean that was the bottom line is this person really valuing you and how do you i think women a lot of times we especially in relationships with men we don't um we don't really value ourselves you know until recently I'm, I'm not, I'm saying we as a population of women. <laughs> I understand. People <laughs> traditionally, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. People, I think women have tradition, women traditionally undervalue themselves versus yeah. men overvaluing themselves. Well, it's, it, it, it's an ego thing, I think. Don't you think? Yeah. There's men that don't value themselves too, though. But That's I mean, true. Um, I think it's, I don't know. You could explore tons of that with, the concept of valuing, how does it really show up in the day-to-day -day app applications? What does it look like when you do value yourself, when somebody pays you a compliment versus, you know, just that one little dynamic of a compliment? What does valuing yourself look like versus not valuing yourself? Mm -hmm. Or when somebody doesn't really, um, when they're not valuing you, what does that look like? Um, There was, uh, you know, valuing your boundaries even. I had a conversation with somebody recently where the person on the phone was not valuing my boundaries. You know, I was like, okay, this conversation is not being productive. And, you know, it was a confrontational conversation. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I think we need to end this conversation now. It's really not going anywhere productive. We will talk about this later. And the person was like, oh, yeah, just one more thing. And they just want to just keep going and going and going. So they're, they were not, I mean, they were not. Is this a relative or a client? 
it was an ex relative. <laughs> okay, I, sorry, I just had to know. I mean, I just, I just had to know. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Yeah, it was a situation, uh, and it was interesting because somebody else was kind of a, aware of the conversation, and they were like, "Boy, they just really didn't value your boundaries at all, did they?" You know. So anyway. Um, I think we get used, it's easy if you're in a, in an environments that devalue, but you don't really know what it means to be valued. And you don't, if you've, if you've come from mentally or emotionally abusive situations that are very subtle, you don't realize it when somebody is devaluing you. Am I making any sense? I'm kind of talking cryptically here, but... <laughs> No, that's okay. I, I think that's interesting that, that mentally or physically abusive that are subtle. And I think that that is really interesting because. Well, not even physically. It doesn't even have to be physical. That's what makes them so subtle sometimes is they're, phys they're kind of emotional. Or, or emotional that, that are subtle. Yeah. yeah. That are manipulative or sort of a gaslighting type of situation. And you get where that just feels normal don't realize that somebody's not valuing you. You're, you're, you're crackling up on us. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, you, your face is frozen here. And I've got static, so I'm just going to continue talking until we... Hold on a second. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. But you can't see me, right? That's correct, and, and we're getting, we're still getting some um, static on your vocal. Huh, okay. I don't know what it is other than unless it's internet connection. It must be internet connection because it came up suddenly. Um, I'm gonna try turning the video back on and see what happens. I turn it off intensely. Uh, We still have your pretty picture. Okay. We may have to go with my picture on it because it's not letting me restart the camera. Okay. So, um, anyway, I don't know. So, Judy, uh, you want to unmute and tell me what you think? Is that giving you any ideas for some really micro content you could create? Oh, I think it's excellent. And um, creating the content would be appropriate. I need to um, word it correctly. Yeah. And thank you for sharing me on um, Lori's page. And I will see if I've got that. And I notice also Tammy Ward puts out really good questions, not necessarily on this topic, but she just seems to have a way of putting out a question that connects with people on whatever it is that's. Um, going on and i'll just throw this out they're calling me to go do the infusion there is someone called a covert abuser c-o-v-e-r-t and that's exactly the type of person that you were just talking about who it's not a physical thing that can be uh, shown to anybody else but it is def definitely the uh, gaslighting and the manipulation and the Questioning of what to say, et cetera, et cetera. So that reminds me that that would be an area to, um, you know, throw out there as part of a post, not using those words because people won't understand it, but um, certainly the techniques. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to, I think this is a good place to stop right now since we've hit the hour and my technology is reducing by the second. <laughs> so. I guess the universe is saying, okay, that's enough. <laughs> all right. All right. So thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you so much for helping with crafting to, for tomorrow. I now feel very comfortable about that. Okay. I was a bit anxious about it. I, I thought I was going to have a little bit of a struggle I, until up until now, until recently. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for helping me to, to pair that. And, and Judy, thank you so much for saying don't talk about labor to guys. You're absolutely correct. And be right there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I go. Love y'all. Love you.